Uh, welcome to EBTC webinar series 2013. Uh, over the uh, few weeks you have been hearing uh, from EBTC experts over the uh, dynamic sectors of transport, energy, environment and ITR. Today we are going to uh, uh, concentrate on biotechnology sector. Uh, what we are going to do is uh, talk on biotech destination India opportunities and challenges. So the overall aim is to give a glance at the Indian biotech ecosystem, the emerging trends, opportunities, and also a look at uh, the IPR and the regulatory issues, and also from the investment perspective. So uh, before we actually start off the, uh, the uh, talks, I think uh, I would like to briefly introduce uh, the speakers who are going to be a part of this session. Uh, Geeta, Dr. Geeta Swamilingaya, that is me. Uh, who is a biotech sector specialist at EBTC. Uh, so I have an experience over 17 years uh, spanning from academic to industrial uh, uh, setups in biotech field, uh, whether it's uh, research and development or uh, product commercialization or technology transfer or even the techno-commercial aspects of biotechnology. And uh, also to mention that uh, a good number of international publications and product patents to my record. Uh, the next speaker is Mr. Amitesh Suman, who is the Senior Manager, Operation and Business Development, Able India. Amitesh has over uh, 10 years of experience in biotechnology research and business. He has worked over uh, science and innovation projects and, uh, you know, also into the uh, in and out licensing uh, products and technology development in companies. And he's also built business modules over various biotechnology services. Uh, and I think um, currently has been uh, associated with Able. He also has good uh, patents and publication to his record. So I welcome uh, Mr. Amitesh Suman to our uh, webinar series. Mr. Siddharth Dodi, who is a manager, Life Science Knowledge, Park, uh, Knowledge Banking, S-Bank. Uh, Siddharth Dodi is a part of Life Science team in S-Bank. The, uh, the Life Science team in, uh, is involved in uh, the various activities of Life Science portfolio in S-Bank and he has been in part with the strategy and business development team at Tata Group Drug Discovery Venture, that's the Advenus Therapeutics, which is, a, which is a, a, a good pharma company in India and also the Big Tech Labs, which is uh, into the medical devices um, sector. Uh, Siddharth is uh, also a biochemical engineer in his background and has an MBA from Indian Institute of Science. So I welcome Siddharth also to be a part of this webinar series. So today we're going to talk about EBTC in brief and uh, there's going to be a discussion on Indian biotech 2030, how the, uh, the biotech uh, scene is looking at an Indian perspective. Um, there's an, um, also an investment perspective uh, glance given by uh, Siddharth on the life science industry and we will uh, also share the EBTC services and activities that we've been carrying out in biotechnology sector and uh, we have the Q&A session. So I would suggest the participants uh, uh, present in the webinar to actually reserve the questions at the end of the session. And uh, there is a prompting window where you can actually type in your questions and uh, we would take up the questions um, on us, uh, which is actually uh, pointed towards the specific speaker in the session. So uh, with this, I think uh, we will move to the uh, uh, discussion part of the uh, um, session. So. EBTC is an EU program with a mission to assist the business, science and research community in Europe and India. Uh, whether it's supporting the technology transfer from research stage or to the, to the product launch or the service launch in the Indian market. We are present across the length and the breadth of the country. New Delhi is our headquarters but then we have regional offices in Mumbai, Bangalore and Kolkata. Our core sectors are biotechnology, environment, energy and transport and uh, uh, we have uh, four strategic uh, 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 imperatives to, uh, to actually foster the EU-India collaboration over the sectors by uh, promoting or being a gateway to the Europe and India or Indian, Indians in Europe. Also into providing information and market intelligence report to the above sectors. Also helping the market entry process from the scratch or even it could be the incubation services or support of business and R&Ds over the sectors. We work in partnership with um, some of the renowned uh, EU cluster partners or the consortium partners. You can see the Fraunhofer's, the Danish Techno Technological Institute, and so on. So um, 
we are uh, geared up to actually support both Europe and in, uh, India in terms of um, science and technology innovation and research and product development and business opportunities. The biotechnology as a sector on a global perspective has been growing very steadily if you see the market and has an enormous potential to provide solution to several challenges in the healthcare, food, energy and related sectors. Uh, here what I've done is uh, clearly um, trying to map uh, the biotech uh, sector by segment wise uh, for the, uh, from, from the European side and the, from the Indian side and we can see that there's a lot of tremendous scope or synergies where we can uh, do a lot over the subsectors of uh, biotechnology, whether it's biopharma or you know it's bioservices or bioagri or even the bioinformatics. So with this uh, opening remarks, I would uh, ask Amitesh to uh, present his view on Indian Biotechnology 2030. Okay. Uh, thank you, Geeta. Thanks. Uh, I welcome all the participants at the various time zones who are connected with the webinars. I'm going to start uh, uh, by giving a perspective that uh, how India is poised to take the next leap in biotechnology development and, and the resolution which has been passed recently that India would be going to achieve $100 billion club in biotechnology by 2025. So I would take you through to the various opportunities, advantages, advantages and various uh, different activities which is happening in biotechnology in India which makes India to be the best destination for biotechnology innovations and growth in biotechnology bioeconomy. So can I have the slide? Okay, so I have my, my discussion is, is, is divided into into following uh, points, I will start talking about, I will begin my talks with an uh, advantage in India. What are the advantages that we have as a nation in terms of taking biotechnology to its next generation uh, jump? What are the market overview? How, what are the trend? How it is being designed, classified and, 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 and uh, placed? What are the growth drivers in biotechnology? Why do we claim that we can reach out to be a $100 billion club in biotechnology industry in India? So what are the, those growth, growth drivers? How a big set of stories like, bi like Biocons can also be uh, disseminated and be repeated continuously year on year with other business verticals. And what are the opportunities at the end? I would also be talking what are the opportunities in India for multiple uh, uh, nations to integrate their research activities uh, to plug in and, and, let this, and see the growth uh, in biotechnology in India. Can I have the slide? So look at this slide. What, where India is poised? How we claim that India is poised to take the jump? First and foremost is the demand potential. The kind of a population that we have, 1.2 billion population of India, is is creating a huge market for biotechnology products in India. Be it services or products, not just in diagnostic and health services, but uh, the other biotechnology uh, uh, biotechnology products as well. So it, there's a advantage in terms of of, of people, that is one. There is a huge amount of growth in economy and economical status of that population which is sitting on the, uh, on the fringes in, in, at the bottom of the pyramid. So there is a huge demand uh, which is being driving this biotechnology industry in India. So that's, that's, the, uh, that's the whole uh, demand potential from that perspective. And I would collaborate with, it, it, with the policy support which Government of India is building up in terms of understanding the requirement of this industry to grow. So there's a policy support from not, not just from the industry, but also from Government of India, Department of Science and Technology, and Ministry of Science and Technology, and Department of Biotechnology to boost uh, the growth in India. There's a huge amount of investment opportunities where the FDI is being given 100% in uh, uh, permitted in uh, uh, through automatic routes in biotechnology. So that also gives it, it a chance to grow to that extent. There is a huge amount of skilled manpower, skilled human, uh, skilled workforce in India in terms of science. So that also gives India an advantage position to take the lead. Innovations opportunities. We have seen how the investment in terms of Government of India's initiatives and uh, both public sector and private sector initiative in terms of creating innovative environment. So that also bringing the demand from the people, policy decisions, money 
and, and skill manpower all put together built advant India at a very advantageous position. Can I have a slide please? So, so we are talking about when, when we are talking about advantage India putting all this together we are thinking about a situation when India currently which is sitting at a five a billion dollar uh, by, uh, US uh, uh, billion dollar business is, is trying to reach out to close to 12 billion dollars in 2017. And of course, 2015 is our vision of, of getting to uh, 100 billion dollar club. So let's understand what is what is in uh, how the markets are placed, how it is being di uh, divided, how the segments are being done. Uh, but it is better that first we understand in last three decades what are the major things which has happened in India in terms of uh, building bioeconomy in India. Not just if you look into uh, uh, 1990s uh, from uh, 1980s to 90 era of uh, 10 years, you will realize that. Not just India has built one of the biggest biotechnology company during that period, but the support from Government of India in terms of setting up a CCM, the Center for Cellular, Cellular and Molecular Biology Laboratory, uh, Micro Institute of Microbial, Microbial Biotechnology, and uh, in, in Department of Immunology. So if you look into this, this, this ten, 10 year of development, that gives that India was looking at uh, not, just a, not, a, not just a molecular biotechnology uh, perspective, but it was also being setting up in that point in time about uh, their growth and strategies for uh, sectors in vaccines and uh, setting up uh, uh, government uh, of India's laboratory to make uh, to give a push to the in, uh, industry. That, that was one. If you look into 1992-2000 era, it was an era of a huge boom in contract research services in India. A lot of the organizations started, Sinjin was started at that, uh, in 1994. And, uh, and along with that, uh, cent uh, Center for Biotechnology, uh, you know, CBT, was established to focus on bioinformatics and genomics. So the focus was started shifting from uh, uh, building, uh, in, and they realized that that was the era when uh, India was started getting their expertise consolidated in terms of service industry and built a huge uh, policy and uh, process-oriented uh, verticals in, in biotechnology services and finally started growing and started feeding the biopharmaceutical businesses in India as well. And that was also an era when bioagriculture, agriculture biotechnology in India was taking a major, major jump. And that was continued till now. Can I have a slide please? So we are we are looking at we are looking at how India was trying to India India is setting up their processes, not just in terms of biotechnology institutions, which gives you skill, manpower, innovative research, but also Amelie has started setting up a private companies and private infrastructure uh, through public sector and private sector investment in creating services in both biopharmaceutical and bio agriculture and bioservices business. And this is how the Indian biotechnology industry is segmented. First is biopharma because that's still being the major chunk as what Gita mentioned in the slide around 62-63 percent of uh, the industry uh, is being covered by biopharmaceutical their contribution in recombinant uh, uh, DNA technologies, uh, be it uh, uh, molecular antibodies or, or therapeutic medicine or preventive medicine so uh, either in biosimilars or biobetters biopharma takes the highest chunk. Bioservices in India is becoming the second major sector which gives bioindustry and bioeconomy is a major boost. Bioagriculture is the fastest growing sector in biotechnology in India. It is growing com with a component annual growth of around 23% uh, percent year on year. Uh, so bioagriculture has a huge potential not just in Bt cotton, uh, sorry the big bio, um, uh, the, the, the GMO crop, but uh, uh, the other equipment and uh, seed uh, businesses as well. Bioindustrial, which is majorly comprising the various industrial enzymes, manufacturing has huge potential as well. Bioinformatics, which is not in, in my, uh, 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 my understanding, it has a huge potential, but we still have a lot of uh, milestones to cover. India has achieved a huge amount of uh, growth in bioinformatics uh, and, and I'm sure uh, the, the way we are progressing we have huge uh, opportunities available in bioinformatics uh, sector as well. Okay, uh, I, I think uh, we, can, we can stick to the robust growth in the biotech sector uh, slides. Uh, we can skip the slides which is earlier. 
Look at the slide. This this slide says, and that that's this is the promising uh, this is the promising features that I was talking about. Can I have can I, can we go back to the slide, please? Okay. Uh, uh, this is what I was I was I was talking about. How India is 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 positioned himself in terms of a consistent compounded annual growth rate of 23.2 percent, which states it, uh, and that that we can see a consistent growth from 2005 to 2012 with a 23.2 percent compounded annual growth, and that gives a huge opportunity for all of us to look at India as the next destination for biotechnology growth, which probably will leap and jump to any uh, opportunity which is being thrown to us. Next slide, please. Okay. Uh, this 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 gives us a uh, perspective about how India Indian uh, various biotechnology uh, sectors are are taking uh, uh, the pie of the whole uh, you know, 360 degree understanding of how the overview of the Indian uh, market breakups in terms of revenue. If you look into the biopharma; it has 63, 62.0 percent uh, contributions. Bioservices huge, 83.0. 18.3, bioagriculture 40.9, but I, again as I mentioned, biotechnology, the way it is growing at 23 point percent gives a huge amount of an opportunity in this, in this sector and we'll see a, a potential growth in coming futures and again, bioindustrial and biopharmaceutical has a marginal uh, 3.1 point which is very significant. Next slide. This, I, I hope uh, uh, the next speaker would be covering more on, on, uh, on, a, uh, on a revenue side. This gives us an understanding about how our export and import uh, in terms of domestic growth of biotechnology sector in India. Can I have a slide please? Okay. Uh, it, all this is possible not just because the initiative which we are taking in terms of policy and we are taking in terms of government initiative. There are huge companies which have been built up in India in, in each and every segment that we have been talking about whether it is Bio, uh, biopharmaceutical services and bioagriculture sector or bioinformatics bio in, uh, as well. So there are uh, major companies which have been contributing in biotechnology industry, CMs uh, now sitting on the, uh, on the high seats, the high seats and, and taking the lead in terms of uh, vaccine and making India as the vaccine destination of the world and vaccine capital of the world. So CRM sitting on the first uh, position, Biocon again is, is, is revenue in terms of uh, uh, US, you know, million, uh, 349.3 US uh, million, uh, dollar in millions. Seed companies, Nuzulvedu Seeds, Reliance Life Sciences, Nova Nordics, Rasi Seeds, Panacea Biotech, Bhayat Biotech, Ankur Seeds, Michael. These are, these are the major, and you can see, as I mentioned, bi bioagriculture companies are setting up a, a huge platform uh, in terms of their presence in bio uh, economy in India with a, with a post biocon and serum taking the lead. Can I, we have any? Next slide, please. What is happening? What are the remarkable, remarkable, notable, salient features which is uh, which is which is significant in Indian biotechnology sector? India, as we know, uh, uh, is among the top twelve biotechnology destination in the world, and we know what kind of infrastructure that we build and built in, not just in terms of uh, quality of people, services, policies, investment opportunities but also an environment of the science to grow in India. So India is a destination, 12th uh, uh, major destination in biotechnology in the world. Second, in Asia, as I said, vaccine, vaccines, we are leading the world. So we, we, we are a remarkable global positioning as what we have set up a trend for us. The major thing which is happening in India in terms of uh, growth and what we can leave is pharmaceutical company which had a much better and bigger say in biotechnology, non-biotechnology sector, sector is also coming into uh, you know, recombinant uh, DNA technology drugs or protein drugs in India and that gives us huge amount of an opportunity for us to look at uh, the potential of reaching out to the target that we have set it for the nation. So that is again a huge potential for us to look at. There is an environmental change in terms of policies and IPR and I hope somebody from our panel will talk about the regulatory issues gives us a huge amount of opportunities again uh, for global companies to set up a base and that will give us not just uh, not just India as a, as a prime you know, location for technology to grow but also to grow at a much much more competitive way so that the, your, your, uh, our bio economy for the global world will be will be become remarkable. Next slide, please. 
what are the, what are the growth drivers as what we have been thinking and I'm just trying to elaborate what we have uh, discussed. Can I have the slide please? Of course, we have discussed about it, the, the kind of a population that we have, the, the increased uh, in healthcare expenditures, the demand in export of, of the biotechnology and technology life sciences based products. So those all put together creates a growth in demand, policy support and increasing investment. These are the growth drivers for the biotechnology sector in India to take it to the destination that we are looking at. Can we have the slide please? We have, we have slightly touched upon uh, on the rise of not rise uh, rise in, in, in the economy, uh, rise in common economy to the people sitting on the fringes, um, uh, but uh, all the, the huge amount of people who are joining our middle class segment, expanding middle class population, uh, uh, and as, as it is mentioned, uh, the segment size is estimated to be about 550 million by 2015 for 50 million in 2010. So we can we can see a huge huge amount of. Uh, in flow of, of a middle, middle class in India which has the potential to spend money and to demand for more uh, more and more healthcare services and that drives our, our growth sector in India. Can we have the slide please? We have, we have only covered the policy support in, uh, which, which drives this, this, this uh, sector both in terms of new facilities which, which we are trying to build up, new biotechnology development strategies and, and, uh, uh, and uh, resolutions which are being being uh, followed by government of India uh, with, through it. Yeah, um, so I think Amitesh was uh, expressing on the strong policy support which is very crucial for the uh, sector development and uh, where he's trying to say that uh, the uh, most uh, active body in India, the DBT, the Department of Biotechnology is actively involved in designing the National Biotechnology Development Strategy. Okay, um, yeah. Amit, Sorry. please continue. Okay, not, uh, uh, of course, DBT, not just, uh, and DBT has also been trying to set up various subcommittees with an expertise, not just to build up an economy uh, of, of, of bio in India, but also trying to see that how inclusively we can integrate the skill development program through various channels, integration of universities, integration of a remote universities across Northeast uh, and other places in India to support and and, and build the local local uh, opportunity creation rather than uh, talking about a, a bigger setup in terms of a biopharma and CRO and um, uh, CMO facilities. But there are huge uh, uh, things churning out in a, in, a, in, a, in a customized and localized way as well. Can we move to the next slide? Yeah, uh, I, and this has also been realized by the government of India at the initial stage that if, if, if this industry, which is which is which was a couple of years back, was too, uh, nascent, it is better that government of India puts in money. Government of India understand the value of this industry and try to integrate at every stage this industry needs. So, government of India's funding is very crucial for biotechnology industry through various multiple and multi-dimensional uh, 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 initiative, which uh, uh, DBT and uh, DST and uh, Ministry of Science and Technology has uh, took over in terms of BIRAC and DBT's various grants and proposals and projects. So venture funds, infrastructure development, international collaborations, clinical distribution bills, not even that. I would also emphasize uh, and to talk about various biotechnology parks, which I, I'm sure I'll be talking next to, uh, in, in terms of uh, uh, initiatives from government of India to build and uh, encourage the local entrepreneurs to, uh, to give them support to their ideas and uh, innovations. Can I have a slide please? This is important to understand because uh, this industry can only grow and this is a sector which is a science driven uh, sector needs to have a policies in terms of regulatory issues in place and, and our Indian nation and, and the ministry has been very very prompt in terms of setting up a best practices in terms of uh, you know, clearances or regulatory practices in India so that innovations can be conducted policies can be placed in terms of growth of contract research and clinical research in India for biosimilars and bio better drugs development in India, bioagricultural sector development in India. So, so the policies in terms of regulatory framework has been set in place to give it a big time boost for the sector. Can I have a slide please? Of course, now uh, uh, there is a shift in terms of how 
India was thinking in terms of industrial development. Biotechnology per se was considered as, as, a, as, a, as a shift from, from a traditional or conventional methods of infrastructure uh, development. And it's, India started looking at uh, setting up a bioeconomy in a different way by, uh, by a cluster of multi-dimensional scientific institutions of, of various uh, uh, biotechnology parks and science parks which has, uh, which has uh, given uh, this sector uh, again a different uh, paradigm shift in terms of how industrial development was looked, upon, looked at in Indian uh, biotechnology sector. Can I have a slide please? And you can see it is mapped all across India, not just confined to uh, uh, the southern city, which is supposed to be the uh, the, the major market. Uh, uh, as we know, Karnataka as a state and Bangalore as a city is considered to be the capital of biotechnology, the knowledge capital of India, and the biotechnology biotechnology capital of India. So it is it is it is it will be very. Uh, it, it's better that we also talk about what's good which has happened in the city of Karnataka and the state of Karnataka which has built the biotechnology uh, cluster in India in terms of not just, uh, not just uh, the, the, the money per se but the kind of an environment that we have set up. As, 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 as the fact says that 60% of the biotechnology company in India have a base in Bangalore. 50% uh, of the total revenue in the na national biotechnology sector comes from Bangalore city itself. So we can understand this, this model can be, can be, can be explored and, and can be extended to other parts of India. The, the, uh, we, we will have a multiple Bangalore uh, sitting in all, all, all other places, and which is happening. If you look into uh, cities uh, and states like Uttar Pradesh, where we have a uh, huge infrastructure built up for biotechnology innovation. If you look into the University of Tejpur and Guwahati, and in their incubation centers in, uh, in, in, in biotechnology development, it's, it's tremendously encouraging and gives a feeling that uh, we are not far behind of, of the objective that we have set up. Can you have the slide please? As, as we've been talking about uh, what kind of uh, high-end research infrastructure creates, uh, innovations is, is possibly, it is only possible when we have, when we really have high-end high research infrastructure which has been built by both public-private partnership and we can, and then, and, and we can see uh, some of the, some of the success stories which is in front of us in all across India, from Hyderabad, Pune, Lucknow, Chennai, Bangalore, in terms of setting up a biotechnology paths which has built Indian research environment in a big way and a key research institution which has plugged in in their research and innovation with these uh, technology paths to create a very comfortable ecosystem of uh, you know, public-private partnership of the scientific growth in India. These are some of the major strong inflows of foreign investment which has brought in, uh, in, Indian, in India at various sectors at various stages which also gives us a, uh, a tremendous amount of uh, uh, confidence that how our Indian companies is poised to take up challenges and uh, shake hand with the multinational companies to bring in a uh, very cohesive technological discovery integrative uh, collaborations and bring in and, and attract investment to the sector as well. Can I have a second slide please? Biocon it is, it is important to talk about Biocon because we have seen, uh, and this is the, not just because Biocon is India's largest uh, biotechnology company, but it is, uh, the Biocon is important to discuss in this context because Biocon has, is a shift in its, uh, in its, uh, in its uh, uh, change of Indian biotechnology psyche. The way we have started, the company started from Enzyme and to become, uh, to, am I audible now? Am I, am I back? Yeah, we can hear you. Can you please continue? Okay. So, so I, I was just trying to give a perspective in terms of biopharm because uh, you know, this is how the transition from an enzyme company to become a biopharmaceutical company, uh, and this kind of a paradigm shift needs to be needs to be replicated in multiple other industry, uh, other biotechnology companies to take uh, take the next uh, jump. So, uh, with this, I hope uh, I've covered almost uh, all all my points, uh, and uh, I would be love to. Uh, uh, and I would encourage people to uh, give, discuss uh, more on when we have a Q&A session. Okay, and opportunities as 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 come on the slides we have already discussed. So, and I'm, I'm sure my time there also. We'll take up the issues of vaccines and uh, therapeutic products and uh, uh, various uh, 
sourcing opportunities in terms of CRO and CMO in India uh, uh, during a question hour session. So, um, thank you. Uh, we'll move on to. Uh, thank you, Amitesh, and uh, 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 we'll move on to the next session. Uh, Mr. Siddharth is going to uh, uh, talk about uh, the investment perspective of the life science industry. Over to Siddharth. Uh, thanks, Geeta, and uh, thanks, Amitesh. It was uh, really a wonderful presentation. And uh, uh, so, so uh, you know, I'm I'm part of the life sciences team at Yes Bank. Uh, yes Bank is very aggressive in the life sciences field. Uh, we uh, we help uh, companies in different stages of uh, growth, be it uh, you know companies uh, uh, you know who have just started up uh, and looking at uh, looking at raising the private equity. We help them. We advise them raise private equity to large companies uh, who are looking at raising uh, different structures of debt. We do a lot of uh, structural finance products for them, and uh, we are uh, very much gung ho on this sector. Uh, so uh, moving on to my presentation, uh, just to start on uh, you know what where Amitesh has Amitesh has left. So India is uh, is actually a growth story, you know, and there are some of uh, some of the main reasons for the India being a growth story is uh, one being the econ economic indicators. So what we see is that uh, you know India when it started uh, yeah, uh, when post liberalization that is 1992 uh, the amount of growth that has happened in india and uh, thanks to our present prime minister uh, dr manmohan singh uh, india has uh, seen a lot of uh, growth uh, just to give a comparison from 2000 to 2020 uh, india's gdp would have grown by uh, you know almost 10 to 12 uh, 10 to 12 times uh, which is an enormous bit if you compare it to economies like uh, China and all. Uh, so, uh, so India, India is uh, India is really a growth story, and uh, you could see the stark difference in different sectors: be it education, be it pharmaceutical, be it biotechnology. India is uh, leading in uh, you know all these sectors. Apart from that, uh, there are many dem demographic indicators. Uh, when you see India is a young country, uh, you know 31 percent, as the number suggests, are you know between 0 to 14 age group, by 16, 64 percent and 15 to 64 years. And so India is uh, a pretty young population with uh, a lot of new institutes coming in India. Uh, in fact, uh, you, know, you know, I belong to Indian Institute of Science, which is a premier institute. So uh, we have seen that the, uh, the government has taken steps to make, uh, you know, increase the number of IISCs in the country, these IITs in the countries, IIMs in the countries. So the amount of talent, uh, the human capital, which is uh, reflective of a increasing economy, is increasing. Apart from that, uh, the the government is very much indicated, very much committed to uh, the, uh, the the healthcare spend. You know, although although healthcare spend right now is just close to one percent, but uh, the government proposes to increase the healthcare spend to close to three to four percent by 2015, uh, and uh, the life ex expectancy has also increased to 64 years. Uh, in 2009 from 49 years in 1970. So in all, uh, you know, India being a part of the BRIC nation, uh, so uh, India is actually a growth story. So now moving on to the evolution of the Indian life sciences industry. Uh, so what we have observed is that uh, uh, when in 1970, when uh, the, the industry was nascent, the market was primarily dominated by a lot of foreign companies. Uh, and um, in the 1980s, uh, there was domestic companies established, and uh, a lot of uh, infrastructure development started happening. A lot of export initiatives were taken in the mid 90s, and the post liberalization, uh, we we saw a lot of uh, pharma belts coming up. Uh, one of the belts, uh, which is in the Uttarakhand and the Uttra, uh, UP and the Himachal region, at that time it was called uh, UP. So uh, so this. This belt, there, there was there was a lot of uh, formulation units, a lot of pharma companies came up, and there was a lot of uh, incentives in excise duty which was given to uh, uh, the growth of uh, the Indian pharmaceutical industry. But the but the actual boom. Uh, so 
at this point of time, the Indian uh, pharmaceutical industry was primarily uh, doing copycat stuff. And uh, we were re-engineering uh, foreign products and selling in Indian market because there was no product patent per se in India. And only uh, there was only an existence of uh, process patents. And in uh, 2005, when India signed for the TRIPS, uh, then, then uh, product patent came in and uh, Indian companies uh, made a paradigm shift and started looking into new uh, avenues of uh, research, a new IP adoption of product patent regime, uh, a lot of discovery research started happening. And uh, we are seeing the fruits of uh, those 2005 uh, developments, uh, which are, we just saw that uh, last year uh, Ranbaxy released the first Indian NC uh, uh, for malaria. And uh, uh, there, are, there are many other companies which are in the drug discovery field who are uh, creating uh, uh, good pipelines. We have seen Advanced Therapeutics, uh, where I had worked earlier, uh, coming up with a molecule uh, on diabetes uh, and uh, a healthy uh, pipeline on other indications as well. Then there is Glenma Pharma, which is, which is, which is, which I believe is a very well evolved model because they have, they have one line of business which does pharma, which does generic pharma, uh, branded generics. And then there is a other line of business which is into discovery research. In fact, uh, they were the first company to out license a molecule uh, to Sanofi. Uh, this was this was again a diabetes molecule, and uh, we we are uh, we are uh, really seeing that the uh, Indian life sciences uh, industry is uh, is evolving. Um, uh, India has uh, proven its strength and capabilities in the areas of manufacturing. Uh, which is which is very evident. Uh, uh, we can we can very well claim that uh, we we are the uh, factories for uh, the entire uh, pharma industry. Uh, now we are getting into drug discovery and uh, generics, which will obviously which is which has obviously been our forte. And uh, after the uh, and and India is heavily dependent on uh, um, export countries like US and all. And after bills like Obamacare coming in. Uh, we and with an impetus to generate, we believe that uh, this sector will uh, see a lot of uh, growth. So, uh, just uh, touching on the four bits of the pharma uh, licensing sector, uh, there is the Indian pharma uh, sector, which is which is the strongest sector and which is the oldest sector, as we saw in the previous slide, started from 1970. Then there is a growth story, the biotech sector, which is lead, uh, which is. Uh, led by companies like Biocon, uh, uh, Serum Institute of India, Panacea Biotech. Then there is the Indian medical device uh, space, which is uh, close to $4 billion. But uh, if you look at this space also in, in the country, 75% uh, of this space is driven by imports, um, by imports. And just 25% uh, is uh, basically exports. So a paradigm shift needs to happen in the medical device sector also uh, there are there are certain uh, government uh, uh, barriers in this uh, there, is, there is an import export anomaly in the medical device sector and that's why this sector is not uh, able to take off uh, however we see a lot of uh, new companies coming in the indian medical device sector as well then there is a there is a uh, uh, there is a cram sector which is uh, which is uh, which is uh, comprised of both the CROs, that's the contract research organization, and the CMOs. So we have seen that uh, the CMO sector has uh, shown uh, good promise of the year because of the uh, generic nature of the industry. While uh, on the contract research side of it, uh, which could be divided into the clinical research, as well as the, uh, the other side is the preclinical drug discovery. So the preclinical drug discovery has seen a lot of uh, 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 growth and a lot of uh, collaborations that are happening. We saw. Uh, we saw Edwinus uh, Takeda deal some time back. Uh, there was Jubilant used to run a uh, big contract with Eli Lilly. So a lot of strategic alliances happened in the contract research space. The space that we believe, the Yes Bank Research believes that uh, is not able to take off its clinical research and uh, primarily because of uh, the regulatory hurdles which, uh, you know, for your trial protocols you need to uh, really wait for a long time from moving to one phase to the another, just getting approvals. So, so we believe uh, that the real growth story in the life science segment would be the Indian biotech sector as well as the 
contract research space primarily the preclinical as well as the uh, drug discovery piece. Now opportunities for India in the license space and uh, this is a known fact that uh, uh, we are seeing a lot of uh, patent expiration that, will, that, that is going to happen in a lot of uh, uh, blockbuster drugs uh, are going off patent. Uh, this has enabled a lot of opportunities for Indian direct players where uh, Indian companies file for ANDAs, ANDAs as well as uh, DMF to get into uh, the, uh, these generic markets and uh, India com constitutes almost 8% of the total global generic mar uh, market by volume indicating a huge untapped opportunity. Apart from that, India has the second highest, so this is a very important point, India has the second highest number of US FDA approved plants, making India actually a generic hub. Uh, outsourcing to India is projected to spike up for the discovery and manufacturing of formulations. So there is a, there is a very nice uh, research that we did which shows uh, the extent of outsourcing in the pharma value chain. So if you look at it, uh, uh, the drug discovery part, the discovery part, we are seeing a lot of alliances happening and a uh, lot of uh, companies from the EU as well as uh, US are coming to India. There are very good uh, contract research organizations in India, primarily in the Bangalore belt, uh, which are which are catering to drug discovery services. And API manufacturing has always been our forte, so that is an evident uh, fact. So uh, Indian biotech industry has seen high growth, bigger CAGR in excess of 20%. The key drivers for growth on the biotech sector are increasing investments, uh, outsourcing activities and exports. I would like to stress upon uh, the investment side of it uh, in one way is that although there are a lot of the, the amount of VC funding that is happening in biotech has not been very high in the country. And this is primarily because of the fact that this is a, this is supposedly a risky sector, if you look from a financial standpoint. But but if you look at the government support in this sector, this has been a hum humongous. You know, if you look at the different government schemes which are in the country, because uh, just you know, because I myself has uh, you know wrote a lot of grants. So just just sharing something which is very personal is that you know when I passed out of my MBA. MBA I joined a startup, a biotech startup, and uh, you know uh, they were coming out with a uh, an innovative product. And we, we got, and I used to write a lot of grants. We, the, the the Indian government is very very supportive of new projects, new biotech companies, and uh, and uh, there's a lot number of schemes. You know, name it from uh, the free point of care, free P of uh, proof of concept to the prioritization. You know, there are schemes such as big. I will talk about these schemes at a later point of time, but the Indian government has actually shown a lot of support, and uh, that's why uh, you know this, this sector is actually really uh, booming. Several new newer subsegments of the sector, like bio, bio agri, bio industries, are especially poised for high growth in the near near future. And uh, and uh, like Amitesh was also talking about, uh, he was mentioning about Lanza. So Lanza has set up a very big uh, facility in uh, in uh, uh, in Hyderabad. Apart from that, there are many other biotech MNCs which have come to India. Amgen is there, UCP is there, Biogen. You name it. Every company is coming to India, and that is primarily because not not because of the government facilitation part of it. That is one reason. But uh, you know the prime driver is the cost arbitrage part of it. And apart from that, the the humongous uh, human capital that we have. Uh, supported by a uh, fertile bed of uh, uh, Indian Institute of Sciences and uh, CCMBs and uh, GNCSRs. We have very good uh, 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 academic uh, uh, research-based colleges. And uh, uh, you know, this is chart upon the breakup of the bio sector, uh, uh, biotech sector. And obviously, uh, you know, 62% comprises of biopharma, which is an evident fact because this is basically a translation effect of our Indian uh, uh, 40 in the pharma se sector. Uh, one sector which is not really taken off in India uh, and Amit is also showing this in size the bioinformatics and we uh, at uh, the government uh, you know should should really uh, uh, 
come up and support this sector. Apart from that, uh, uh, you know, there should be some uh, Indian Indian uh, entrepreneurs uh, who should come up with uh, good uh, business ideas because we have seen a lot of business ideas in the bioinformatics field, but they have not they have not uh, you know they have just uh, remained garage ventures. They have not grown to a different level altogether. So this is just big, if you look at big, which is a biotech ignition grant. This is an amazing scheme for uh, ideas in the country. So you, you, you just send an idea, one page write up to the Department of Biotechnology, which is screened by, uh, multiple level screening is, uh, is done to, from uh, various uh, stakeholders in the uh, drug discovery or the research side. And this is mere idea funding to the tune of 100,000 US dollars. And uh, apart from that, there is early stage uh, pre proof of concept, which is called a SIBRI, which is just the parallel of what there is in US. Then there is a BIPP, which is the Biotechnology Industry Partnership Program. And uh, this uh, can uh, do funding up to $10 million. Uh, and this includes uh, doing commer commercialization. Then there is a high, uh, there is a there is a company which is formed under the uh, guidance of DBT, uh, which is called a BIRAC, and uh, which which helps all these funded companies in all the uh, patent issues, uh, funding issues, uh, and all. So uh, just moving to the investments in the uh, life sciences. Uh, uh, space. We have seen that uh, in FY11, uh, close to six investments, uh, uh, private equity investment happened in the pharmaceutical side, four in diagnostics. India is very big in diagnostics because uh, this is a cascading effect to our uh, hospitals and health healthcare. These are primarily uh, diagnostic chains in the country uh, where a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, private equity players have invested. Uh, three investments have, have happened in the CRO space and uh, one in the medical device space. Uh, uh, but uh, you know, we, we have, uh, we, what we, this is FI11, but we have observed in FI12 there are a lot of uh, uh, funding that happened in the biotech space. There was a recent funding in the Bureau of Life Sciences in, uh, which is a flagship uh, US fund invested in a Bangalore based uh, company called as Strand Life Sciences. Uh, apart from that, uh, you know, we have also seen a lot of MA activity in the license space, uh, uh, you know, starting from the days when Daichi bought out Rampaxi to the recent deal in which Mylan uh, has actually acquired Stripes uh, injectable business called as Ajila Specialities. So we have seen that, uh, you know, outside companies, outside big companies, uh, the Pfizer's and the Merck's of the world have always looked at uh, Indian companies and uh, always looked at uh, consolidations. Um, Sanofi had bought up uh, a, the vaccine unit uh, uh, Shanta Biotech. So, so in all, uh, the, the 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 license sector as such has always stayed attractive to the outside world, and uh, primarily because of uh, two three reasons. Uh, one being the cost arbitrage. Uh, we have seen very healthy EBITDA margins in, in the in the CRO space. Uh, even in the injectable space, in the pharma space, and uh, whenever, whenever uh, these foreign companies have looked at uh, uh, expanding their uh, bases uh, in the emerging markets, India is, has been Indian pharma companies, in the licensed companies, have always been a good uh, uh, attraction. And apart from that, uh, you know. For uh, budding, uh, uh, budding companies as well as in the country, there are many, many uh, bilateral funding routes which are available. Uh, there is a Indus managed joint funding uh, which is uh, sponsored by DBT as well as uh, CDTI. Uh, uh, there is an Indo-Swiss collaboration, there is an Indo-Swedish collaboration. So there are a lot of activities in the biotech sector which is happening between India and EU. And uh, we believe that uh, with, with platforms like EBTC and with the platforms like ABLE, uh, such bilateral uh, collaborations uh, would happen and would result in good ideas, good products, as well as uh, 
would help bankers like us uh, look at uh, such attractive companies. Uh, thanks a lot, uh, Gita, and uh, for giving me an opportunity. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Siddharth. And um, uh, we'll uh, we'll go to the uh, um, the session, which is very short and sweet, where we have we are just going to I'm just going to share a uh, few of the things we have done with biotech um, related activities uh, uh, over the year. So uh, this slide is just to show that what EBTC is into and we definitely what we want is we just don't want to be into uh, a mere matchmaking center but then we really want to get penetrate into the um, uh, deeper side of um, uh, the collaboration so which we feel that it, it, ha it happens with uh, you know a, um, having a, a good a set, a set of team at EBTC who would closely work and um, closely work on the Indian and the European counterpart sites. So um, we have good number of consortium partners here are the uh, few of the selected partners which we have enlisted here who are actively involved in uh, biotech activities. And um, I would like to share that EBTC has entered into the uh, tripartite um, a collaboration with Enterprise Europe Network in India. And uh, this is uh, going to be a kind of um, um, an, um, mutual help for India in European market or uh, vice versa. So, yeah, and I think uh, this gives an option uh, on uh, for you know um, a much more uh, wider perspective for uh, uh, collaborations in terms of technology transfers or also on um, information on EU funding opportunities or finance, or it could be the IPA, IPR issues and patents. So this is a, 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 a portfolio, the service portfolio of what EBTC basically does into and uh, it would be basically a market insight or it could actually help in terms of uh, um, uh, the screening the projects at the Indian, uh, Indian comp uh, companies at the, at the national or the state level and uh, uh, strategizing the market entry uh, for the European counterparts or it could be even the uh, uh, implementation aspects uh, which could be um, the incubation services in terms of uh, uh, on the business ang angle or the commercial aspects or it could be with the uh, research incubation services which could be enabled uh, through the networks what we have developed in the Indian uh, uh, biotech entities. So uh, what this would mean uh, in terms of uh, biotech service portfolio is that we want to be um, helping you in terms of uh, research activities, technology transfers and contract research and manufacturing services over the across the value chain we want to be there and we want to help you uh, with uh, every level of uh, uh, the uh, collaboration which you see with the uh, EU Indian entities. Uh, this is also uh, one of the important things which we have to remember is uh, this is a highly knowledge based sector as uh, Amitesh and uh, Siddharth have uh, shared that the crux of biotechnology is that um, everybody wants to know who is who in the uh, collaboration aspect and EBTC is also found um, an IPR health desk which has a service portfolio across the uh, value chain of IPR so, uh, so we also address the IPR issues or the necessary documents which are required for successful collaboration on the research and the innovation side. Yeah, some of the uh, uh, biotech activities which has happened over the uh, a few couple of months back in 2012 November. So there was a, a pan European delegation uh, basically representing from Germany, UK, Estonia, uh, Czech Republic and Poland. And what you can see in the panel are the uh, delegates and also uh, you can see um, uh, the, the state government of Karnataka where Mr. Rais and Prasad, principal secretary, has been interacting with these EU delegates uh, showing the proactiveness. As it's uh, mentioned by my previous speakers, uh, the government support is tremendous in uh, the field and which we can witness here with this um, uh, event. And um, we had good um, amount of uh, uh, speakers and distinguished guests over this session. And what you can see on the right hand side is that we have a mutual agreement with um, uh, ABLE. Uh, and uh, that actually speaks a lot for us to you know, uh, leverage on ABLE and work closely with uh, ABLE in terms of uh, uh, reaching out to the Indian counterparts in much intricate way. 
And apart from that, I think uh, the uh, delegates had a good interaction in terms of uh, B2Bs with uh, interacting with more than 60 Indian companies and customized site visits, uh, uh, technical sessions over the subsectors. So the yield of this, one of the success story is that uh, what we, we can see here is um, uh, the, uh, the, uh, uh, the Indian organization Genome Life Science India Private Limited has actually entered into an agreement or, or in the process of um, having in collaboration with uh, Heidelberg Technology Park. You can see Dr. Andre Domin, who is the CEO of the Heidelberg Technology Park in discussion with uh, Dr. Narinder from the Indian uh, side. And they are jointly looking at uh, working on the biomarker discovery uh, using uh, functional genomics and fingerprinting technology. So this is uh, one of the cases where EBTC has actually um, facilitated the partnership and we are trying to work closely with these uh, two entities to make sure the collaboration is a success. Another work case uh, which I would like to share is here the Estonian based company iGen uh, which is in talks with again with the uh, Genome Life Sciences India Private Limited uh, where they want to uh, find a way to develop um, a diagnostic kit which is related with uh, the bowel cancer and again here the role of EBTC is uh, the partnership facilitation and they've just uh, started off and we are uh, in the process of uh, helping them through uh, the next level of uh, collaboration. Uh, moving on, I think the similar stories are there on, in terms of mission and inquiries where we are trying to work on uh, the French-based bioagri industry and then food industry from the Hungarian um, side. And there are also the service-based uh, collaborations which the Estonian-based companies is willing to look into the Indian market. Uh, there is a Czech Republic company which is actually trying to you know, do services related to the uh, biopharma sector. And um, also we are trying to help the Danish bio agri-based industries to find Indian counterparts. So these are all uh, in a very primary le uh, level and uh, we would not like to dis uh, disclose their identities unless we have uh, something in a solid form. So uh, with this, I think uh, we, I would like to uh, conclude this session that this is a platform definitely for EU-India collaboration and if you're looking at business opportunities or technology collaborations or even if you are looking at you know, research consortium and projects, we could be there for you. Um, there are some ready-to-go Indian biotech opportunities available on our website. You could actually uh, visit our website and look into the, uh, these Indian biotech opportunities which we, have, uh, uh, which we have it on our website and we have closely worked with the Indian entities uh, and they are like ready-to-go uh, opportunities for, uh, uh, for the EU collaboration. So I think um, I'll open this session for the question and answer and uh, we'll unmute the line and uh, people can actually type in the question or you can raise hands for asking a question and we should be able to take it. Okay, uh, there's a question from uh, Ludo Dales uh, to actually uh, to Amitesh. Uh, what are the possibilities for the bio-based chemistry? I mean the production of biofuels and bio-based chemicals. Amitesh, you want to take it? I, I can take that question. Uh, thank you for the question. And there are uh, facilities which have been built up uh, across the coastal lines of Gujarat. Intas has coming up a huge facility for biofuels, apart from their pharma biopharmaceutical uh, facilities as well. So those are the places uh, in Ahmedabad and in Gujarat region of India which could be, uh, and Reliance, is, uh, Reliance uh, is also coming up with a similar facility where uh, uh, there could be a potential opportunities for companies across uh, Europe to collaborate for uh, biofuels. Yeah, there's a question from uh, Dr. Ramanjali Gowda that uh, he wants to apply for a DBT, DBSRC call and uh, he's working on uh, high lycopene tomato. Um, anyone in John Inns or other place in UK? So he's, uh, he's I think, uh, uh, wanting to know the partner or uh, wanting to know um, uh, the information on the DBT BBS uh, C call. Siddharth, so you want to take this? Uh, Mr. Gorda, the thing is that uh, uh, this this call is a DBT, DBT uh, BBSRC call, and uh, there are there are specifics of this call which are available on the uh, DBT yes. website. Uh, there is a full uh, sections on the proposals that are open and uh, 
uh, I'm sure uh, your query would be uh, you know answered if you if you go to this uh, section of the DPT website. Pintu Bhattacharya, Mr. Pintu Bhattacharya. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Yeah, I have just asked the question. I am from a chemical com pharma company called Merck, and I just wanted to know and ask for really Mr. Siddharth Dhodi whether there is any possibility of going for a funded collaborated project in India. No, no, absolutely. Uh, you know, if you, uh, th there are many such uh, collaborations which are running between uh, major companies as well as uh, the uh, uh, the research institutes. Uh, I, I, I myself I remember uh, in my Indian Institute of Science date, there Monsanto had uh, set up a research center inside ISC itself, and they were undertaking research with many departments. So there are there are certain there are certainly uh, many such uh, uh, programs uh, which are uh, running in IITs as well as IISC, and uh, I'm sure uh, uh, may, you know with a company like Mock, uh, many such uh, uh, the researchers would be definitely willing to collaborate. And if you are looking at uh, at specific uh, chem chemicals, I think NCL will be the best place for you to. In about the National Chemical Laboratory, Pune. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, I remember, uh, uh, you know, yeah. So NCS Pune is, is a very good place uh, to do. In fact, uh, the uh, many of Indian small biotech companies, as well as small chemical companies, startups, are uh, 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 you know looking for partners and collaborating with. Uh, no, they are collaborating with researchers in NCA. And uh, so, so I think NCL is a very good place to, uh, you know, uh, carry out uh, such partnership projects. Okay, from on the biotech side, uh, ISCs and all are with. Yeah. So um, I think Miss um, um, Richa Anand is actually typed in a question which is very interesting. Uh, so she says that she has come across various articles where it is mentioned that Mumbai has outpaced Bangalore as the biotech city and want to know if, if this is a real situation and and um, I think um, uh, I would say um, uh, yes and also no and I think uh, Siddharth is willing to answer the question. Yeah. Hi, hi Richa, you know uh, this uh, uh, regarding uh, Bombay uh, you know, Bombay and uh, the Ahmedabad belt, uh, you know, has been very strong for uh, Indian pharma industries. And uh, if you look at uh, the major places of companies like Intas, uh, Sun Pharma, uh, Piramals, uh, Glenmark, they are based out of uh, this region, uh, the the Bombay, Pune, Ahmedabad region. Uh, while while the while the biotech has primarily been uh, driven by the Bangalore. Uh, side of it where you have companies like Biocon, the, the CRO Wings engine, Adrenal Therapeutic is there, Origin is there, but I would like to take one point of yours is that there are a lot of drug discovery which are which, is happen, which has started happening in the uh, Mumbai belt, you know with, uh, with uh, companies like Piramel, Piramel is spending a lot, there is a, a Piramel Life Sciences is spending a lot in uh, on drug discovery which is based out of Mumbai, then uh, Glenmark uh, which is another major uh, Big Pharma in India is also uh, doing a lot of work in uh, uh, in drug discovery, and it's also based out of Mumbai. Advanced Therapeutics has their drug discovery wing based out of Pune. So, in a way, yes, and in a way, no. You know. Yeah, I think to add on to Siddharth, uh, Richa, I would say that uh, Mumbai is a Mumbai, or you know, I would actually generalize as Maharashtra as a state which is actually concentrating on the health sector. And uh, you know there are uh, many stem cell entities also uh, who are actively involved in uh, research have been based in Mumbai. Uh, com compared to Bangalore, which is very heterogeneous uh, in terms of uh, the kinds of um, the companies over the cross sectors, so it has an advantage. But then definitely Mumbai, um, uh, if it is a health sector, I would say that Maharashtra and Gujarat are the major players. Adding, adding to what uh, Gita and Siddharth mentioned, uh, Mumbai has also been uh, fundamentally strong in bioagriculture. If you look at Mahiko, Maharashtra Hybrid Seed Company, which has a huge infrastructure for uh, bio agri biotechnology sector. So that also adds on to the growth of um, uh, Maharashtra as a whole in terms of uh, biotechnology growth.
So uh, I have a question from Pintu Bhattacharya that um, whether EBTC would be able to facilitate partner identification. Um, uh, I would I would say that yes, we would. Uh, we would be happy to you know uh, talk to you to understand uh, your company. I know Merck is a big company, but then what is that you're looking in terms of international collaboration, specifically here on the EU side? And we would be happy to get you and uh, definitely we would, we would like to um, get interest and uh, would help you in part identification. So I think um, I would uh, thank all the participants and my uh, speakers, my speaker friends who are here uh, for being a part of the session, um, for, this in a, for this interactive session. Um, and um, you know, uh, really uh, going into the deep dive of biotech sector. I would, all, I would take this opportunity to thank uh, uh, all the, uh, the participants and the audience of the virtual world and also uh, my friends here. Um, so uh, with this you can actually get us connect, uh, connected on with, uh, write to us on uh, biotech at ebtc.eu or you can reach, uh, reach out, uh, visit our website. Thank you all.